beautiful day. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. It's crazy how the world is, though. I know. I know. Hey. Yes, Mr. Tibbs. Don't you think we should be social distancing? Well, Mr. Tibbs, you're just a puppet. Oh, how dare you call me a puppet? And who are you? A virtual sublimable YouTube video cartoon? What's this? Well, this is a panpipe. Okay, what do you do with it? like to know yeah what that is well this is uh this was the uh new guinea headhunters walkie-talkie for calling headquarters you used to call it diff something different that's right i used to call it the you look marvelous matrimonial moose flute okay how does it work well <laughs> good night what's this well this is uh some cane from uh, grown right at the Sea of Galilee. No, we need some Sea of Galilee now. Yeah, we sure do. Especially the one who walked on the water, yeah. So what is this? Well, it's, they call it Arondo Donux. And it is the cane that grew all around um, Europe and the Mediterranean area. You see, Europe didn't have any bamboo, no bamboo, but it did have this cane. So there were, there were flutes that were made by it uh, in Israel and Egypt. And can you make it work? Well, this isn't yet a flute, but I'll show you in a moment. We'll go down in the shop. Yeah, I'd like to know more about all this stuff. And in fact, how all this stuff began? Well, here's a cool story with Aronda Donix. Do you know that the Spaniards when they came over, they brought it because the animals that they brought could eat all the all the, the green leaf of it. And when they planted it, they could use it for roofs. They could use it for uh, fences, for tomato steaks. Okay. So everywhere that I've been yeah. that the Spanish had come to, I found it in, in California. Yeah. And I found it in um, Mexico. Uh huh. In fact, you know, uh, Mr. Tibbs, the first flute I ever made, first flute was made in Mexico. Okay. I made flutes with it in Argentina. Uh huh. Bolivia. Yo, que mais? I made um, flutes with it um, in Guatemala, and um, that was the first one I ever sold. And do you know one day Spanish captain was going through uh, on a ship and he saw what's called in Florida sawgrass. Sawgrass? It's a tall grass and this is a tall grass also, the Arundo Donix. And in Spain they called it Caña Veral. Caña Veral, that's right. And when he saw on this cape the Caña Veral growing, what he thought was Caña Veral, but it was sawgrass. Okay, get it right. That's right. He yelled for his, he called for his, um, his uh, map maker. Map maker, venga! That's right. And he came and he said, uh, on that cape, we're going to write the name of that cape. That's going to call, be called Cabo, Cabo Caña Veral. Okay. And in today's map in Florida, do you know what it's called? No. Cape Canaveral. No way! Oh my, oh, this is awesome. Tell me more about the history of the flute, please. So I have a little museum down in my shop. No kidding. Yes, and do you have things there you could share with me about the secrets of how flutes came? That's right. So let's go. Okay, we're going to the shop.
going to go down to the museum and we'll cover the panpipe. Yes! Okay. Nice! You know what I want to know? Hi! I'm Lulu! Hi, Lulu. To know how did the pan pipe start? How did the pan? Well, you're invited to go down to the museum with Mr. Tibbs and I. Okay. And we'll cover the pan pipe. No way! Yep. Come on. Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna go down to the museum and we'll cover the pan pipe. There are some really amazing things in here, guys. Let's first discuss, oh, I think the coolest thing in here is this. Okay. About um, the side-blown flute. Um, this is a coconut seed. And here is one of the openings. And as I pull it out, I'm also gonna grab a petrified clam and here you see that it has a big hole and a small hole there's one for a finger and there's one for the mouth and let's also grab this guy here which is what I call a clamarina clamarina, clamarina. now first of all let's pretend somebody finds this and it looks like a monkey's face with two eyes and a startled mouth there. Oh yeah! But before he finds it, he's sitting on the beach and it's a windy day and the wind is <laughs> making some sound. <laughs> but let me take you into an idea of how a, a flute, fipple, whistle could have come about. We're talking times of caves. I don't like caves. And I like to ask you this. Let's say you're traveling into a whole new area and you and there are three caves and you're traveling with your family, your tribe. I like caves. And you're leading it and you get to choose the cave you want. And the middle cave has water. Which one do you think you would pick? The water because the water will allow you to drink and to bathe allow you to trade so um, here you are uh, realizing that that little bit of water if you take some mud and some pine needles outside and some stones you can make that water have a bigger reservoir and share it with more of your family and now they're trading you a rabbit or a carrot or whatever and uh, you get to dish out the water. So one day, everybody's over at your place because it has water, 
and um, it's a very cold day. And, and everybody's like, man, today's cold. And then they're stoking a fire and they're blowing into their hands. And you know, they usually, after they eat, they sing because the acoustics in the cave are good. Well, one day when they were blowing, Oh my gosh, what is this? And, and they discovered when air begins to split, when air splits, it makes sound. So all of a sudden, as they've been using the mud and they've made the mud to make plates and bowls, now they're taking a little mud ball and they're taking the idea of how to make sound again from what they did with their hands. So. They take a little flat stick and they move this and uh, before you know it, you have like the first bird whistle. Now one day the wolves come and the wolves are always a scary time, but this time one of the wolves brought their puppies and a lot of the puppies left, but the nicest puppy stayed and became the family dog. So now they're calling the dog and doing the birds and 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 you've got uh, but it becomes a tool of warning a tool of calling of music of rhythm but let's look at the artist even though the this hundreds of years old um, little whistle isn't that great of an instrument look at how incredible the artwork is come and look at so this. the back of this rather ancient looking Mayan whistle has an incredible Mayan face. It looks like the face of a uh, Indian chief or maybe the face actually of uh, Curandero, the healer of the tribe. But now watch the brilliance of the artist when I do this. Are you ready? Who came to their shores back in the 1500s? The conquistadores, Whoa. the Europeans with the high foreheads and the big bushy beard and the, the European nose and the eyes close together. That would be the Spaniard. So even though the whistle was pretty archaic, this is absolutely amazing that the artist was able to do what he did. Let's look more at the collection. Far out. So there are some ideas involved in how flutes came to be. There is a spiritual aspect and a natural aspect. In the spiritual uh, answer, Genesis 4.21 says that Jubal was the father of the pipe, which translates ugab, which translates shepherd's flute or pipe. So you had um, Jubal, who was the father of the flute and the stringed lyre. Then you have um, in Revelation, in a spirit realm before the King of Kings and the throne, you have different creatures playing instruments. Harp is one, trumpets, Amazing! Nature has also uh, revealed uh, flute making to many cultures, and we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, Lulu. I like that. Uh, Mr. Tibbs, here we go. Nice. Let's talk about the panpipe for a moment. Cool! For a moment. This is a mud dauber or a wasp's nest. Far out. If you see here, you could see that there's one color mud and another color mud that the wasp used. And this part was literally on my shop wall. So here's the wall and this was there. And when I pulled it off the wall and cleaned it up, it reminded me of a three-fold panpipe. And here's a picture of a three-fold panpipe and a picture of a two-fold panpipe. And let's just see if we can get a sound. And in one of these little Peruvian panpipes, or Ecuadorian, um, I believe we'll find another note. There it is. So 
So here nature made it fit and it played. So amazing. So uh, that is an idea of the panpipe. And the panpipe apparently was used in Peru on different levels of the, uh, of the Andes Mountains <laughs> to uh, communicate down and a message like the prince had a boy who will become king one day and they could uh, communicate that. So uh, then it, it was birthed into their culture of music. Here's a okay, nice. Music. Here's another n natural concept. Uh, I have literally uh, been harvesting and seen bees fly out of bamboo holes. Cool! Well, if you would take a hole like that and plug this up, you should be able to get sound if the actual bamboo still has some integrity. Here's a thought. I have seen bees fly out of pieces of bamboo. All right! So let's say you have a tribe near a clump of bamboo. And when the wind blows, they're spooked because they hear the sound of something that... where the wind is crossing over that hole. And they tell their children, don't ever go in there because there's something really weird in there. <laughs> well, along comes his cousin one day and he didn't really know the story. And on that windy day where the wind is blowing across the bee hole, uh, he hears it and he's curious, he's not afraid. And as the wind is blowing, he jumps in and breaks off the piece and starts trying to make the sound and born is the side blown flute. That's an idea. I like that. Far out. But this one here, my son brought to me during a harvest and this one was amazing because uh, the, you have the mouthpiece concept here. Question is how many holes? You have one, two, three, four, five, six mouthpiece and a back hole. So let's talk about something that this reminds me of. So here's nature's kenna and here is an Andean kenna. The V-shaped mouthpiece, which was made from a broken hole. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back hole. Did the ant know where to make the back hole? No. My uncle wouldn't know either. Nope, but he inspired the human to figure out where to put it. So, here, so here's the Andean kenna. I like that. So that's the end blown flute. And here we have the concept of the side blown flute. Also, um, you would have uh, the side blown flute inspired by the coconut in the wind, on the beach, and in time you might have the native putting in some holes, and even stones have had uh, holes placed in them and uh, by water. And this would be another fossil where you might be able to so I've created a clamarina from a petrified clam. Here comes the clamarina. Vamonos! So pretty cool. Now, so in this wild specimen, you would have the inspiration to the end blown flute or the bird flute. But that would be inspired by a piece of 
bamboo with a hole uh, that broke off and created the V-shaped mouthpiece. Whoa! So you can see that nature has inspired uh, flute making. And in this piece of uh, the one that I showed previously that was made and done by the uh, Mayan uh, of the whistle concept, <laughs> that would have birthed the concept of the Irish penny whistle. the fiple flutes. So this little whistle concept later on would have had to turn it into a flute more of a body of, uh, of clay and holes and you'll find that a lot in uh, Mexico and uh, you'll have uh, flutes made uh, in the fiple concept in bamboo and in wood. Uh, this is the native flute. See Lulu? Nice! And you see Mr. Tibbs? Okay! So flutes go way, way back, uh, and these are some of the ideas. See Mr. Tibbs, nature, and uh, a loving God has inspired uh, flute making. So I uh, uh, hope to uh, bring a little bit of uh, these thoughts into the, the midst as a lot of our kids are at home these days. See you in the future at ericthefluteMaker.com. Hey, Mr. Flute Maker! Is this okay for social distancing? Chilling with Mr. Tibbs. Yeah. Play it again, Sam. kids, the storms will pass and everything will once again be beautiful because I love you and God loves you too. Bye.